What's up, guys? Well, it is time for me to discuss the fight of the year for me in 2016, and that is Triple G versus Kell Brook. Uh, this fight, uh, you know, this was a fight when announced, uh, and before it was announced, I thought Kell had a good chance in. Uh, as I was trying to keep up with Kel, uh, he wasn't really being broadcast here in the States, but he knocked out Bizier in two rounds, all right? The guy who had never been stopped. I was very impressed. And in a post-fight interview, I heard Kel say that uh, he wanted a big fight next. You know, he was always criticized of fighting guys that, you know, nobody knew, you know, Jojo Dan, Frankie Gavin, and Kevin Bizier. And he said next he wanted a big fight. And one of the names he said that he would like was Triple G. When I heard that, I was like, man, I was like, damn, that'd be a good fight. Hell, I was just impressed that he said that he would fight Triple G. And, of course, what happens, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn tries to make the fight for Triple G uh, and Eubank. And Eubank doesn't sign. And he offers to fight to Kell Brook. Kell Brook had the opportunity to fight, do a unification with Jesse Vargas. He was 36-0. In my opinion, he would have definitely beaten Jesse Vargas, especially in the UK. Uh, I'm guessing at the uh, 2 in London, uh, he would have gotten the belt. He would have been 37-0. He would have been a unified champion uh, at this point. But, uh, you know, instead of taking that fight, which I think, you know, the story was he would have kind of taken a lesser uh, payday uh, you know, to get uh, Vargas to come over there and uh, to get that belt, it would have been worth it. But instead of being a businessman, he was offered the Triple G fight, and he took it without hesitation. Um, and uh, he signed on the line, and, uh, you know, that was it. And, you know, it, it amazes me that this guy, you know, still gets criticized even when he you know, stepped up the way he did, taking on the undefeated Golovkin, who was on a knockout streak, you know, two-way classes up, uh, you know, people, you know, said that this was, uh, he was, you know, ducking welterweights, ducking uh, Vargas, trying to get out of, uh, you know, fighting Spence and other welterweights, you know, it was just a payday, he just did this to, you know, to, to uh, you know, avoid challenges at welterweight, he sold his all, all those kind of things, people say. When I see it as a guy stepping up, not being a businessman, even though it was a bigger payday, it was a bigger challenge also, the man stepped up to uh, make history, man, to be a welterweight who became middleweight champion, you know, like a Sugar Ray Robinson, like a Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, and it really, this was a throwback situation. You know, like I said, when Robinson did it, you know, there was no 154. He went from 147 to 160, became middleweight champion. And Carol Brook looks up to Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, you know, um, when this fight was signed and announced, I was getting off work and I got a notification on my phone that the fight was official. I was psyched, stoked for the fight. I was very happy that it was coming on HBO and not pay-per-view when I would have paid pay-per-view for it and got off with them showing Canelo instead with Liam Smith, which I did not pay for. But, um. Yeah, I could not wait for this fight, man. This was the most anticipated fight, a fight where I felt that, you know, anything could happen. Did not know what, what was going to happen. I felt that the boxing public and the media uh, was hyped for this fight uh, in, in the proper way. I, I felt that it got the buzz that it deserved. And I felt Kill was a live dog. I put a good chunk of money on him. Uh, also, the odds, Kill was uh, a plus 500 underdog in this fight. Uh, while that may seem like, like that he was a big underdog, the Osmaker showed him respect because David Lemieux, who was middleweight champion and who we all know is a hell of a hitter, he opened as a plus 1,000 underdog against Triple G, you know, which I hopped on. And if, if they had a rematch and it was plus 1,000, I would put money on that again because uh, those are great odds on David Lemieux. And he was a middleweight champion, established middleweight, plus 1,000. Dan and Jake was, was like a plus six sixty three underdog against Triple G. 
you know, so Brooke, he, he got, he got, uh, the respect that, that he deserved, I believe, you know, a wealth of weight, they gave him those kind of odds, all right, <sighs> oh boy, um, you know, like I said, it's a big fight for me, big day, took off work, it was a sunny, beautiful day here, I was completely stoked for this fight, this is the way I saw it, uh, looking at it just now, and uh, the way I was seeing it at the time, basically, all right, at the time, I scored it uh, three rounds for kill with one even, and of course the fight will stop in the fifth round. All right, round one, and these are detailed notes. Triple G missing and getting out box for the first half of the round. The eye injury, which I thought I could be wrong, but I said that it happened during the first part of the fight. As you can see, how Brook is wincing his right eye. Uh, Golovkin catches Brook with a lift that staggers him while on the ropes around the one minute and forty second mark. Uh, Brooke holds. Brooke responds by coming forward with an uppercut and more shots. Golovkin missing badly. Brooke has flurry with 30 seconds left, which brings crowd to its feet. He lands the uppercut that lifted Golovkin off both feet. He, he should have thrown the kitchen sink at this point. He took the foot off the gas and looked at him for a second. 10-9 Brooke. All right. Round two. Back and forth in the first minute. Kale has a flurry before the first minute is up. Right after the 1 minute and 30 second mark, Golovkin misses badly with a right and gets countered. 52 seconds left in the round. Kale lands a right hook, left jab to the body, 3 punch combo including uppercut. Another 3 punch combo. Crowd is going crazy. Right cross lands, 4 punch combination around the 28 second mark. Golovkin misses badly. 10-9 Brook. Golovkin has a busted nose on the stool. All right, I have Kale winning the first two rounds, clearly. Round three, Brook opens the round with a left hook. Golovkin has a left hook that could have been called a knockdown but was ruled a slip. Golovkin is putting on pressure. At this point, you can tell the eye injury has happened. With a minute and 58 seconds left in the round, Brook looks at his corner and points to his eye. Brook throws a five-punch combo around the minute and 48-second mark. Hard right hook by Golovkin while Kale is on the ropes. Kale is pawing at the eye with 120 left. Right uppercut and left hook lands by Brook. Golovkin lands left hook. Brook lands right cross with, with one minute left in the round. Kale throws 14 unanswered punches at Golovkin. Crowd erupts. Kale closes the round with a three-punch punch combo and a right cross. 10-9 Brook. Golovkin breathing heavy on the stool. All right. Round four. Five unanswered punches by Brook around a two-minute and 45-second mark. Uh, all of them didn't land. I think maybe two missed. Okay. One-two at 2.30, followed by another. Golovkin misses at and gets countered at uh, 2.08. Then Brook lands a two-punch combo. Golovkin lands straight right on the ropes around a minute and 13 seconds left. Three-punch combo by Golovkin right before the 49-second mark. Jab, jab, right by Brook before 38-second mark. Golovkin clinching before 15-second mark, tiring and gassing. Check left hook by Brook before 8-second mark. When scored live, it was a 10-10 round. Could have been a Brook round. Letterman has scored it 3-1 for Golovkin, giving Brook the second round only. I find that laughable. All right. And in the fifth round, Golovkin lands combo with Brook on the ropes around 235. Brook moves to the other side of the ring. Golovkin is desperately trying to finish Brook throwing unanswered punches. Kale with triple vision is evading Triple G's punches punching with his guard down and taunts him at the 2 minute and 20 second uh 2 minute and 21 second mark because he's missing badly and can't hit him. The Lufkin lands three punch combo. Two right hooks by Brook. Four punches unanswered by Brook. Straight right by Golovkin, answered by right and left hooks. Golovkin lands at lands right at 1 minute and 25 second mark. Kill backs to the ropes, hands down talking to Triple G. 
Kale gets hit with a two-punch combo. Before this, around the 1 minute and 17 second mark, Engel has gotten on the apron by crowd reaction and Lampley's call. A minute 13 seconds left, and Kale, uh, Kale at, at 1 minute 13 seconds left, Kale evades three punches. A minute and seven seconds left, the towel comes in. Kale is leaning against the ropes with his hands up, taunting Triple G after, after evading punches. When Kale realized the fight had stopped, he looked at his corner with his arms extended, wondering what the hell they're doing. The crowd is booing. Tom Loeffler is in the ring, looking like his cat died. Lampley and Hopkins are stunned that Engel stopped the fight. Hopkins said, I don't agree. The HBO punched that number said that Golovkin landed 133 punches, while Brooke only landed 85 punches. That's bullshit. I don't know what fight CompuBox was what was watching. You know, why are they favoring Golovkin, it appears. You know, uh, Kell Brook uh, clearly outboxed uh, Triple G in this fight. Uh, you know, the the reason that I thought he would win. Uh, he was when he was beating this guy with boxing. Triple G is easy to hit, in my opinion, with poor defense, uh, you know, slow reflexes. Uh, and, you know, Kell was doing what I thought he would do, man. Um, Triple G tried to say that power did not affect him. I strongly disagree. You will see with the thumbnail that I used for this video that uh, and his marked up face, Triple G was feeling Kell's punches, you know. And anybody who feels that Golovkin dominated this fight, you know, I don't know what fight they were looking at, man. You know, I, I clearly feel that Kell was winning this fight. I wish we would have known what would have happened if he would not have gotten injured. Uh, and I, as, as I have said in the past, I wanted this fight to continue. Uh, I, w I went absolutely nuts when this fight was stopped. I, I posted a live reaction on this YouTube. This was before I was doing YouTube videos, but I recorded it and I uploaded it when I had 100 subscribers. Um, you know, I just felt that in a fight this big where Kill was actually winning, uh, I, I hated that Engel stopped this fight. But as I said a few days ago, uh, the way people react to a kill, not showing him respect, uh, you know, whether he, even when he stepped up to fight on Triple G, uh, with him winning the fight, in my opinion, and uh, taking on uh, Spence in his hometown and being an underdog and people writing him off like Teddy Atlas, uh, I'm like, hey, maybe maybe Engel did do the right thing. You know, what would it be worth, you know, to uh, potentially risk, uh, you know, furthering an eye injury, uh, being, you know, having to be a career ender when uh, nobody respects the guy. But the way I felt, um, you know, at the time and for the longest of time, the way I felt, man, was uh, imagine if this if this fight would have continued, and Kale would have somehow pulled it off, whether it had been a decision or a stoppage. Kale pulls this fight off with the eye injury. Let's say the injury is so bad that he had to retire. Okay, Kale would have retired if he had pulled it off. He could have retired, uh, you know, undefeated, you know, unified middleweight champion. Uh, you know, it would have been an unbelievable feat that that uh, all of uh, Great Britain would not have forgotten. Uh, and if he would would have been retired because of an eye injury, hell, I mean, he would be a, an, an icon. Uh, you know, there would be buildings built in his name. It would have been a big deal. You know, uh, I felt like he was not given every opportunity to to win and finish the fight. Engel, you know, was premature. I know he's known Kale since he was nine years old. You know, I'm pretty sure he looks at him as a son. He was looking out for his uh, well-being and long-term best interest. Um, and in hindsight, I have I have softened up on on the uh, position, especially with the way the boxing world treats this guy, man. You know, one of the reasons he is one of my favorite fighters is because he stepped up. He did not have to. He could have fought Vargas and uh, you know easily taken that belt and been a unified welterweight champion, still been undefeated, but. He took on the real challenge, the bigger, bigger name, uh, in in a triple G. You know, with his undefeated record, with Triple G being undefeated, going for middleweight gold, man. Um, so you know, that's how I feel about this fight, man. This was my fight of the year in uh, 2016. Uh, the way I anticipated this fight, uh, you know, with my 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 favorite fighter going in, it went into this great challenge, man, and the way he performed. Uh, I was proud of him, and uh, you know, I just wish that uh, he could have.
could have finished, man, because I truly believe he could have beaten Triple G, man. He was outboxing this guy up on uh, Ben Roussel's scorecard, an official judge in the fight. And um, I believe that is about it. Um, if I miss anything, I will leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, I, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but, you know, uh, maybe I'm not. It's just that, uh, you know, I wish I wish we could have seen a real definitive end to this fight instead of it being stopped because of an injury or stopped because of the corner. Um, this was a great fight, great atmosphere, and uh, one that I will never forget. And as I've said, you know, I know Kel has a loss on his record now, but, uh, you know, this man will always have my respect, man, for stepping up uh, and fighting Aka Lufkin when he did not have to. You know, this was a real fighter stepping up to fight a real fight. You know, why people don't uh, get that to understand or respect that, I have no idea. Uh, you know, stepping up. Also, this man is voluntarily enrolled in the clean boxing program. And, uh, you know, for people like Derek James and, and others who write this guy off thinking he's just going to get blown out by Errol Spence, it's ridiculous, man. This guy showed toughness and heart in this fight, man. He did not go down to a knee. He did not roll over. He, he wanted to continue fighting. And uh, at Bramble Lane, his hometown, in that soccer stadium where he's won foul his whole life, you know, he is not going to go down easy, man, to Errol Spence, man. Uh, Errol Spence is going to need backup to get uh, Kill Brook out of there. And, um, uh, you know, Kill will always have my respect, man, for, for doing what he did. And Derrick James, he thinking he said he saw this fight and didn't, didn't see anything special, just thinking that he's good and not great and all this. Don't think he's phenomenal and all that. Man, we look at boxing different ways, man, because I tell you, this guy gained a lot of respect for me and a lot of other people, man. Check Adrian Broner, Adrian Broner's Twitter when the fight was over. Tweet this guy said he lost money on this guy, but he got a lot of respect for this guy because he was one tough dude. That was what he said on his Twitter, man, and a lot of other people did. Kale's profile went up, and uh, you know, HBO wanted to keep doing business with the guy. Uh, and uh, everybody said Golovkin was exposed, man. But uh, but Derrick James says he did not see anything special in the fight. You know, just thinking they're going to be able to blow through the guy. They're going to find out the hard way on May 27th. Thanks for watching.